All right, so I'm gonna make a video going over how I make thumbnails for YouTube. I've I've thought about doing this type of video for years and years and years, but I'm not a Photoshop expert. I I still don't know what I'm doing in Photoshop. A lot of the techniques and a lot of the ways I do thumbnails, it's kind of just stuff hobbled together over the years and thrown together knowledge that I have accumulated for how I do it. And I know there's going to be a million different ways of doing everything that I do. There's probably a thousand different ways within that that make it easier to do. So, how I, for these types of videos, I've always found them very beneficial for me. Anytime anybody that I look up to or anybody I watch shows how they do their thumbnails, I'm always really interested in that to see if I can gleam any knowledge out of it. So, let's use this as like a symbiotic kind of thing. I'll, I'll show what I do. Maybe a lot of you will learn something in that on how to make a thumbnail a bit better or certain techniques, whatever. But also, maybe you'll be able to teach me some ways to do things faster. Now, I do have a video that I'm getting ready to upload, like right now, which is the end of Portal. And the first Portal thumbnail I did was okay. I thought it could be better. I just didn't spend that much time on it. So I want to do a nice one for this. Um, I don't really know what I'm going to do yet, except use portals. So we'll see what happens. First things first, let's open Photoshop, shall we? 1920, 1080p thumbnail, 300 DPI. I don't really know if there's any reason for that other than that's what I've always used and that's what I'm always going to use. So first things first, I need a picture of the background of Portal. The way I normally make thumbnails is that I take some sort of element in the background and make that sort of the centerpiece for what we're doing. It doesn't really have to be anything crazy. Like here we just have GLaDOS in the background. Nah, I don't really like that. This one's a bit better. I I mean, it doesn't really matter. The only reason that I put in anything, I like having splashes of color in it, so there's nice oranges and blues in this, which is what Portal's all about. And then I just go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, and then normally I do a background of 8, or a radius of 8 for that, just to kind of see how it looks. And then I do, or if it's too much, sometimes I do 4 and have that, but again, this is just flavor for the background, and then I just mess with like the contrasts and the, the brightnesses just to make things pop a little more. You can go in and there's a nice handy tool in Photoshop where you can click Auto Tone, and sometimes that fixes things a little bit, like you can see the original is kind of washed out in the edges, but then if you use Auto Tone, it it changes the contrast a bit. Sometimes it'll change complete colors and sometimes it'll correct it and make it look a little better. So one of the first things I always do is hit auto tone on a picture just to see what it looks like. Sometimes it'll make it a lot better. Sometimes it'll make it look hideous. Sometimes auto color helps as well. So just play with these three, auto tone, auto contrast and auto color because sometimes that'll save you a lot of work. Sometimes it just you just put that in and suddenly it's like, oh, Everything's fixed, everything's sorted, I like that. Then we'll up the vibrancy and the saturation. Just to let the color the colors pop a little more. Again, YouTube loves color uh, thumbnails. They just, they're visually appealing. But again, that's just the background, it doesn't matter. So the idea I kind of want for this thumbnail is... I mean, sometimes you go in with an idea, sometimes you don't. I, I, I'm always weird making videos like this, because I don't want it to seem like, I know best, I know exactly what I'm doing. I really fucking don't. I'm flying off the seat of my arse most times and hoping that it works out. And I'd like to think that my thumbnails are decent, sometimes better than most, um, most of the thumbnails I make, uh, because I put more time into them. Other times, not really, because I just do it really quick. Uh, but let's get a nice GLaDOS PNG. You have to save a PNG, because otherwise it, it won't retain its transparency. Um, and stick her in, because this is the end of the episode and the end of, uh, it's the boss fight between me and her. So what I want basically is her on one side of the screen, me on the other side of the screen. You'll always get really great composition that way, where it just, it looks nice because it's something and something and your eyes are always drawn to those two things. If you look around YouTube, there's so many thumbnails done that way. Or, or it's me like in the middle with something in the background like text, like I've done for the like Doom thumbnails recently or the Resident Evil thumbnails, those are really basic. It's just the background, the character cut out, and then the text in the background, and I've always done those for different types of games like Until Dawn or Undertale. If you go back and look at those thumbnails, those, it's just really basic stuff. Now the next thing I wanna get are the portals. So I'm gonna put these in. I'm retaining the transparency of these as well, and just sticking those in the background. Again, the last thumbnail I made was basically this as well. I just like how it looks. It's the orange and the blue are such 
contrasts or compliments or whatever you want to call them, um, that I really liked them anyway. But what I wanted to see what it would look like if GLaDOS was like coming out of this uh, portal. So we're going to try and get that effect going, but we have to make sure that she's the right size. Um, and then we need something else for the background. Now this looks bonkers. Can I save this with this? So I'm selecting this and I'm going to go up to edit uh, content aware scale and then hold shift and drag that up. Now sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it looks great uh, and then sometimes it looks awful. Um, and sometimes you can kind of get away with it. See there, it looks okay, but not, it doesn't really match up. But these are the types of things that you can kind of pick and choose and pry and figure them out. Uh, this is the spot healing brush. The one I was just using. I'm so bad at explaining what I'm actually doing. Again, these things are, they're like the tiny details that really you won't see. They're the details that later on I look back and go like, man, I could have done that better. But for the sake of time and efficiency, I could be here all day making thumbnails otherwise. So I want to get rid of the black in this. So you can go and there's a num numerous ways you can do this. You can get the wand and just select the black and that would work. Or you can go like select color range and then click on the black and it will select that. It selects all the other stuff and all the other layers, but that doesn't really matter. It'll only affect the layer that you have selected. Uh, for the sake of this, I'll just go to the magic wand and then select the black. And then I want to take that out. So what I'll do is select and mask. Uh, let's put this on a white background so we can kind of see what we're doing a bit better. So the black is only selected. And if you press R, you can go to the refine edge and just go over the edges. Normally you use this for like hair because if your hair is against uh, a white background, ideally, you can use this and it will actually select all the little strands of hair. And that's how you can actually get the hair to pop out and you won't have to like just cut a hard line around everything. Um, and then just, I don't know, do we need to smooth it? Not really. Um, so you can mess with like smoothing and feathering and everything. We might have to do that again later. But then to just do that, it'll, so it'll keep some of the fuzziness of this, which is what I really want. Because you don't want it to seem like you just hard cut all of that out. And now you have this nice kind of fuzziness of the inside of the portal, which I like. I like a lot. And now to make it look even better, to make it stand out even more, I'm just going to get a random other uh, portal image and stick that in the background. Any image. It really doesn't matter. The only thing I want to get across is that it's like a different area, a different location, because that's what portal's all about, is about moving one thing through another thing and then through the portals you can see windows into different areas so it just looks nice to have it that way and it makes it stand out in the background more i'm going to i'm going to roughly do this um and then just duplicate out that and delete that one so now you just have that on its own in a window which i think looks really nice again it's just it's the tiny little subtleties in it where like, you see, this is all blurry, basically, and this is not. So for me, then, that means that, oh, this is more in focus, this is clearer, this is all the stuff that doesn't really matter. This is just adding color to the background, basically. Um, so this sort of gives the window effect. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm debating whether or not I should actually put myself into the thumbnail al at all. I, I normally put myself into the thumbnail because when you look at it, then it's immediately like, oh, it's a Jacksepticeye video, because that's his face. I see it. So if you like my videos, then you'll, you might click on it more. If you don't like my videos, then you'll be like, okay, I can avoid that one, whichever you prefer. Um, but now as I'm doing it, I'm starting to wonder if that will even be good. But I do need, I do want to put in the orange portal to kind of offset things. Um, but now we're just going to cut GLaDOS out to make it seem like she's actually coming through the portal. I'm just going to really soft edge on the eraser, just the, the least amount of hardness, 0% hardness on it, to just kind of go around this. There's, there's probably better ways of doing it, but, um, again, just to sort of keep that fuzziness to it. And now it looks like she's actually kind of coming out of it and her bleeding out over the edge of this makes it seem like there's more depth to it, which is what I want. I could blur this background in here a bit and blur it less than what was here. So it still it still pops off this one, but she pops off of that a little more. So you're, the whole point of these thumbnails is to add layers to it so that there's stuff in the foreground, mid, 
background, whatever. Again, I don't study this stuff. I don't really know what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to go with what I think looks good. Because if you've ever watched, uh, there's so many people that I follow that I wish they would go through their processes on things a bit more. Um, again, I'm just messing with all of this stuff to make it look a little better. Just to make it pop a little more. Um, but there's so many people who I'm like, oh, I wish somebody who's really good at FPS games, I really wish as they were playing, they would just say out loud in a video what they were doing. Just once. So I could learn the tactics of how they're getting through that level and being like, oh, that's why you did that sort of thing. So I always thought that maybe some people might want to watch me make some thumbnails just in case you like how I make them and that there's some sort of information that I can kind of give over. See, now I'm debating whether I keep it like that or I just zoom it way the F in so we can get... Now she stands out way more against the background because this is more bland and generic, whereas this is very messy. I don't know, we'll see. That's just the first half of it done. Now we have to stick me in. Um, normally, I have the camera, I have my camera on a cam link going straight to my computer and I use that to just have the video up and then I'll just take a screenshot of the video as it's playing because I can't reach over and take a picture and then go back and time it. I used to do that and then I realized that that was stupid. Um, but I want a high clarity shot and this background is really nice and it's blurred already so it's easy to crop me out of it. But now I'm recording with the camera so I don't know how to get the stuff that I actually want out of it. See, we can do this. So now I'm recording it, but this is how I normally do it. And then the Elgato capture actually just has a screenshot button down here. So normally I'll just be like, and then I'll take a screenshot. So what do I want to be doing in this? I want to be going up against GLaDOS. So what kind of pose do I want? It's always the generic thing where it's like YouTuber face like, it's literally all it is. I used to have a whole folder on my computer of me just with my faces. And then all the faces got outdated because a lot of them just have green hair and then a lot of them had the ponytail. And then I was like, well, I don't look like that anymore. I'm self-conscious because people are actually looking at this. I, I don't know what to do now. That's a good face, right? It's like I'm, st I'm steely determination. I, because I, I would get an actual shot of me from the game but a lot of times because I'm moving all over the place you can't pause it and get a clean frame because it's just too much movement there's too much blur going on and most times my expression is just not that great for a thumbnail your thumbnails should usually be like a clean expression that conveys things like properly and this is how basically every youtuber does it put in the orange one um, now this this wasn't transparent, so I have to do the same thing again where I select the outside of it first uh, And then I will have to go along the edge. I'll do it in black now this time for the extra contrast This is gonna look a little a little stinky But it just gives that uh, sort of fuzzy Look to the outside of it Oh, that's not <laughs> no, I gotta select the inverse and then Paste it over. There we go. And now, these are all the little tiny things that I'm sure there's a reason for these compositionally and how people do stuff or whatever, but because this one is slanting that way, it's going to up and to the right, I want to take this one then and do the opposite of that. Um, or the, I guess, yeah, it kind of goes the same way. Or go with it. Uh, against it. So we kind of have the two portals going out like that, just to kind of fill the frame more. And when I started off doing YouTube, I was so terrified of putting too much in the frame. If you go back and watch my, or look at my really early thumbnails, you'll see me in the bottom corner, like this size. I'm, I'm tiny. Because I was so paranoid about putting too much of myself in the thumbnail that people would get annoyed by it. And now it's like, no, it compositionally it just looks wrong because there was a whole bunch of dead space up here. And that's mainly how I do my thumbnails is that I'm trying to avoid as much dead space as possible. Uh, let's rotate these guys out a bit more. I just selected all of them by clicking shift and then making her bigger. Because that's another thing I learned is that I would normally keep everything in frame. Like if I'm doing an expression, I would try and keep as much of me in frame. Because I thought, oh, well, I, they need to see the, the thing that I'm doing. And people need to see the full portal. But people are smart. Brains are smart. You can make up the rest of the image just by looking at it. Because your brain fills in all of the blanks, basically. I really like how this is looking so far. 
I don't even think GLaDOS looks like this in Portal 1. I think this is her from Portal 2 when she gets rebuilt. Uh, Portal 1, she's a lot more round in the head and she's a lot more snake-like. This one, they actually gave her more of a face that's extended out of the body. But this looks much, much better. Um, and I really like how this looks so far. The portals are different sizes, though. Uh, I can merge these. I took out the background for a second because I, I still don't really like it. It's, it's too busy. I almost just want a flat background and it's easier to figure out what I'm doing. Um, if I see it like this. Alright, let's see how this face actually goes in. So now, I'm using the quick select tool. The- it's in the one with the magic wand. I- I don't care. I- oh god. I know how already. I'm trying to show the people the other tools inside this. So it's the magic wand, but there's a quick selection tool in there as well. And you can just hold shift and press W and you can flick between all of them. I wanna- I wanna take me off the background, basically. So, how do you do that? Uh, this is one of the first techniques that I learned doing Photoshop because it was the one that I needed the most is how to get me into the picture because a lot of my old thumbnails was just face on body. I would just take my face and put it on something else. So I just take this and scrub across it usually and then it, it detects the pixels and stays within that. You can take it out with a pen or you can take it out with um, a lasso or whatever you want to do. Those are a lot slower. This usually cuts the time in half for me or even way more than that, and then you can hold ALT to do the minus to take out the stuff that it didn't detect, and you can kind of keep going over it and over it to detect stuff a bit better, and then you can start refining, but newer Photoshop has this new thing where you can get select and then hit subject, and most times it does it for you. <laughs> That's a new thing that I only found out about in the last uh, probably the end of last year, where it detects the pixels anyway, what's light and what's dark and what doesn't really conform. Like, all of this is easy, because it's a dark- or it's a white background on a dark set of hair. This stuff usually gets a little messier, because it doesn't really know, it can't really detect different shades that well, but it's getting better and better. Uh, then go up to select and mask, you can do that by hitting W again to go back to one of these tools that allows you. Now you can see how hard the edge is. So, for a lot of this, like the hair, Hair is fuzzy, so I'll do the same thing again where I hit R and I'll just go around the edge of my hair. Steady hands, I should be a surgeon. So then it just keeps the fuzziness of the hair and it stops it looking like a hard line. Nothing wrong with a hard line, because a lot of times it just looks fine anyway, but I don't really like it personally. Um, and then sometimes I try and do the beard just to get the hairs out, but... Yeah, it's not bad. Just to give that, that, to make it look like hair. And then you can like smooth it out if you want. I used to use Smart Radius to do it, but Smart Radius has kind of been stinky in the last while. Sometimes it doesn't really work. If you have something on a green screen, um, like if it's just me on a green screen, it, you can hit decontaminate colors, which will detect the color of the background to you and any of the haloing of the color that comes around, it'll get rid of. Um, it actually worked pretty well for this. Yeah, but sometimes you can see that this edge looks a little weird, like the pixels just don't look right. And it adds this weird effect if it- if there's no colors to really decontaminate, so I just don't use it for this. I just smooth it out, up the contrast, and shift the edge, so any color bleed that comes off the background is kind of blended out. Um, again, there's probably easier, better, faster, cleaner ways of doing that sort of stuff. That's just the method that I use. Um, and then I'm gonna stick me in here. Uh, and do the same sort of thing again, where I just brush out all of this to kind of smooth me into it. Now this- this isn't great. This isn't the best that I can do and the best that I have to offer and that my top talents, but it gives me exactly what I want, which is me versus GLaDOS. Um, and that's the whole point of the episode. Um, I might add in a portal gun. Doesn't look that bad, actually. Me versus her. Um, and then again, you see how washed out I am? That's normally how my camera looks anyway. But when we edit them down, Robin has like, um, color grading and then contrasting and all that and color improvements because you're shooting raw, or as raw as you can, which tends to leave stuff a little washed out looking because it's retaining as much information as possible in the camera so you can mess around with it later and you can change the curves and highlights and all that kind of stuff. So, what I normally do is just hit auto-tone. That's what it did to my face now. Which... I mean, it has a style to it, it's stylistic, but I just- it's just completely over-contrasted, so I don't like that. You can hit auto-contrast, and that looks okay, not great either. 
Um, sometimes these work a bit better than others. Now, I like how the eyes look with that one, and it adds, adds a blue. I'm a huge fan of blue shadows. I do them for so many different things and add blue to a lot of stuff. But for this, I don't really like it. So I am just going to mess with the curves. I'm not the best with curves. I wish I was. I usually do an S curve, which is like bring down the hi uh, the highlights a bit. Okay, <coughs> I know I'm probably preaching to the choir to a lot of people on this, but if you're like me and didn't know this stuff before you started, the curves are basically like this is your dark and this is your light. So it goes up in a line. These are how much dark is in your picture and this is how much light is in your picture. So these are your shadows and these are your lights or your highlights basically. Uh, again, I'm probably butchering a lot of this, but you can bring down your highlights so the light side of the pictures come down with this because if you if I just go in and I use brightness Then the brightness is just going to shift the brightness of everything and then the contrast is just going to shift that as well But what your curves allow you to do is shift up the darker areas So the darker areas would be my beard my hair all the hair on my face the eyes the plugs whatever and that kind of shifts those up and then if any of those are kind of getting a little too bright then you can bring it down with this so a lot of pictures, a lot of like scenery and stuff like that to make them look, to make them like really pop out. This is like an S curve, as they call it. And you can push that around and it just makes things pop a little more. The dark, so you don't lose the detail in the dark. If you didn't see all the hairs in my beard here, it would be like crushing blacks, which means that you lose all the detail in your beard or all the details and backgrounds. If you're ever watching a movie and you're looking at the, the dark aspects in it and it's really shadowy, and you can't really make out what it is, that usually means that it's color graded wrong or it's lit wrong because it's... The blacks are crushing everything. All the detail is lost in the blacks. Sometimes people use that for stylistic reasons um, to make the main thing pop out even more. But it's the same in whites. If the... If there's no detail in the white elements, like if all the hairs were lost in my beard, then the bl blacks would be crushed and you'd lose all the detail. Anyway, I shouldn't be getting into this right now. That's not the point of this video. Now with the curves changed, I can up the contrast a little more to make it not look as bad. And then we'll just add a little vibrancy and a little saturation to it. So that, like my skin just has a bit of an orange glow. The lips get a little pinker. The eyes get a little bluer. Just so there's more color and there's more pop going on and it catches your eyeballs a bit more. Because humans are good at recognizing faces. That's another really good reason to put faces in your thumbnails. It used to be really frowned upon years ago and a lot of the bigger YouTubers or people who never use their face and stuff would always be like, Duh, oh, stupid Let's Players putting their face and everything. Number one, it conveys a lot of emotion. That's why face cam is always really good because if I'm playing a game that a lot of emotion is coming around but I don't want to talk over the scene, then you can see that emotion on my face. It's the same here. I mean, this is whatever, but for another game, like, say if it really upset you or you got shocked or scared, all of that's conveyed in one picture. But also, humans love faces. We like identifying faces. If this thumbnail, if you went through a list of thumbnails, like, brrr, down the list, and this popped up in the middle of it, your eyeballs would identify what's happening so quickly. And that's what a good thumbnail should be able to do, is show what's going on in it very quickly. This is easy. Portals. Done. GLaDOS, done. Me and GLaDOS, it's a versus type of screen, you've seen so many of those, done. It conveys a lot of information. This video is supposed to go- or this the portal video is supposed to go up 11 minutes ago, so I need to wrap up my fucking thing. I wanna see what it would look like if I put the portal gun in there. Um, let's do the same thing again, select subject, see will it selected properly. Not really, this one I kinda messed up because it's just not the same sort of thing, but it selected enough of it where my job gets a lot easier after that, where I can select this stuff. So this is what I meant by the, the contrast and the shifting edge. I could hit R and refine it, that's what the refine edge tool does, it gets rid of the, the contrasting between the white and the black. But I could smooth first, uh, yeah, and then up the contrast a lot, so that it's getting, it's, the contrast is basically determining between the blacks and the whites, that's what contrast is more or less, and then if you shift the edge down, it moves the edge closer to the subject. If you shift the edge up, it moves it away from the subject. So shifting it up brings in more of the whites, shifting it down takes more of the whites out. And then if I do that, and then just take that out, I don't know why I always duplicate it and then move it out. I was trying, the, the idea behind this was to try and see if I could get it, like it looks like it's in my hand. So it's like coming through the portal with me. That's not really coming across and I'm just blocking a bunch of my face and it just... It looks kind of 
wrong. Something I hate is when you find images like this where it has the onion skin baked in. That's what this is called, by the way, this transparent background. I think it's called onion skin, which is really weird. Uh, but this portal gun is at a bit of a better angle. Um, but when the onion skin is baked into it, it makes it so hard to, like, select stuff. Like, going across, because it selects all the squares. Pretty annoying. But selecting subject worked out fantastically. And just kind of brush some of this out. Uh, or erase it out. I always erase. A lot of people would probably tell you to, um, use masks. Masks are the same thing, but it's non-destructive. So, as you, as you scrub stuff out, you can go back and scrub it back in. I... I don't know, I'm just a dumbass, and I like... <laughs> I like using the erase tool. I've always done it, and it'll, it bites me in the ass a lot to do that. This is part of the onion skin still, so I'm just gonna brush that out as well. And, see, these are all the tiny little details where later I'll go back and look like, uh, that doesn't look great. But, on, on far away, just doesn't really matter. It looks a little goofy, but I just like how... I have the portal gun in there, so it just kind of completes the picture. I don't like how this hits my face. We could! Okay, let's let's edit with another tool called Puppet Warp. Where this allows you to put down a node and you can... Well, that's only one node. Put on two nodes, it sticks that in position. It puts two pins in it, basically. And then you can do this and you can move stuff around. Now, with that like that, it doesn't look great. Um, put a bunch of pins everywhere to just kind of like lock it in place, but what you can do is start moving individual pieces. So then you can move this down and you can move this back up to make it still the same sort of shape. Um, and then... Like that. So now it's it's out of my face, but it still looks fine. It's not misshapen, it's not cut, it's not moved, and it's not warped too much. Great. Now I need a better background picture and we're done. I'm gonna go with this one. Um, it's Aperture from Portal 2. It's just the aperture background. Um, but the reason I'm going with this is that it's dark. It's dark and it's still in the universe, so it's still part of the game. Um, and the reason I want it to be dark is because it pops me and GLaDOS off the image even more. Man, this portal gun looks so goofy. I'm glad it's there, but it also just looks like it's not the right size. It just doesn't look like it would be in my hand. What do I have, a teeny tiny little hand? It doesn't matter. It's it's done. It's whatever. It looks fine. Uh, I also want to add some glow around these. So you can double click, go to outer glow. I have orange selected already because I was doing the portal thumbnail last night. Um, and it just kind of adds more to it. Uh, you can select, you can hit this for the colors and you can go around, you can pick whatever color you want. But you can also click this to pick a color that's in that so it looks like that. Um, does that look okay? Just adds a little more to it. So many people are probably at home going like, No, it looks so much better before! Yeah, I'll probably look back at this and go like, Yeah, you're right. The blue looks really nice. No, it, look, it looks better. It just adds like that sort of a spectral, sci-fi, glowy sort of look that a portal would have. Very, very, very final touch is to go to my face. Uh, sharpen. I use Smart Sharpen. And then this amount. This looks crap here. Like, this looks nice because it's clean, it's smooth. When you put Sharpen on, it looks a little crappy. I'll put it on the gun as well, actually, just so it pops out more. But for a thumbnail that's far away, I like adding Sharpen to stuff because GLaDOS popped out a lot. Like, this is her normally, and then when you add this back, some of the edges pop out a little more. And again, when you're scrolling through your phone or you're scrolling through a TV or a computer, that tiny bit of sharpness just pops the image out even more and adds it away from the background. Because the backgrounds are all blurred, but now this is sharpened, so it looks like it sticks out more. Um, normally, I don't really like sharpen because if you start sharpening stuff too much, it starts looking like this, which is just hideous. But it does pop out all the hairs. The hair. Um, the beard, the eyebrows, the sparkles in the eyes and everything just pop a lot more. So, I like it a lot. But, that is how I make a thumbnail. Normally, I'm much faster at this because I don't have to explain it. I'm just plowing through it and doing it however I want. Um, but, 
I think taking your time to do a thumbnail, there's a million different ways that this could be better. There's a ton of different types of thumbnail I could do. I could start adding in lens flares, which I used to really lean on, and you can start adding filters, and for lens, well, I'll show you just a little bit about how I add in a lens flare. So we'll take this lens flare, because I like it a lot. There's a lot of, like, sparkles in it, and I really like blue. So if I was to do this, I would put it over the image, okay? Now, if you've ever had an image, and you're in Photoshop, and you're wondering how you get this black out without taking out some of this detail, just go to this, and hit screen, and it takes out the blackness. And when it takes out the blackness, then it just, it's basically taking out the dark, but overlaying it. So if I, if I removed all these and put it on a blank background, it wouldn't take out the black, because that's not how it works. And then normally I would put in some, you know, I leave it in, just for the sake of it, because it adds some sort of, like, blue glow to this, it adds to the whole, like, whooshiness of it. I don't know, it's just how my brain works, but normally I would, for, like, Subnautica thumbnails, I was adding in a lot of lens flares to them and a lot of dust to make it seem like I was underwater and the lights were really like refracting through the water and the dust and everything and it just didn't look right. Um, and to make it seem like it was kind of like a camera looking at it. Uh, sometimes it adds more, sometimes it makes the image way too busy. But whatever. But now you see that the background doesn't really matter. It's, it's just there to fill space. See, I took the background away and now this uh, lens flare, wherever it's not on a background, it doesn't take away the black, but when you put the background back in, it does. Anyway, that is how I make some thumbnails. Hopefully some of you learned something out of this. Again, I'm no expert. I don't really know a reason for half the stuff I do. I don't know compositionally what I'm doing. I don't know like rule of thirds and all that kind of stuff. I just know it looks nice. And over years of doing it, I've probably developed some sort of framing techniques and some sort of style that I'm not aware of. It's just how I like things. I, I have been putting clean stuff on blurred backgrounds for years and years and years and years. Um, and now everybody does it. I, I'm not saying I'm the first one to do it, but I was definitely some of the first in my friend group to be doing it. Um, and I, I just always really liked Gaussian blur on things. It was really really clean looking and it just made stuff kind of pop out a bit more I I really really liked it um, and it adds so much more depth to everything So now you have like sharpened and then slightly blurred and then really blurred so it's like this stepped tiered system um, Again, I don't this just looks nice. I know I like what I like. I know it looks nice. I like colors I like not there's so little empty space in this now, which is great um and it just looks cleaner that way. But anyway, that is my thumbnail techniques. Uh, it's basically all, a lot of the techniques I use here are basically how I do everything. There's nothing really missing that I do. Um, but if there's easier, faster, better ways of doing things or how to add in lens flares and make them look like they fit images better, any of that stuff, feel free to let me know. I'm not beyond feedback and criticism on this because Again, I'm not a professional and I don't really know what I'm doing. Well, I guess I am a professional if I'm doing it professionally and uploading them to my YouTube channel that is monetized. But you know what I mean. Um, so I'm all ears. I, I love to learn this kind of stuff and learn techniques and watching other people's and other YouTubers and friends and everybody kind of show how they make stuff has really helped me out in the long run. Um, so feel free to leave a comment down below if you learned something or if you have any more information to give over. I'm all ear holes. But until then... Goodbye! GLaDOS, you're going up on YouTube now! Isn't that great?